The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the advertisers, owners, or management of Pacific Telestations, LLC. For comments, opinions, and questions, please email Jess Lujan at jessthebuzz at gmail.com. The Buzz with Jess Lujan. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Lujan. Exciting show tonight. Former Governor Carl Gutierrez, my in-studio guest tonight, and probably for a couple more episodes. Governor, good evening. How are you doing, Malika? Oh, yeah. Buenas, buenas, Jess. Yeah, good. You know? Thank yeah. you. Well, you know, I wanted to talk about 9-11, of course, but let's start out here, basically, because you are running for governor again 2018, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So give us... is. What is different about Carl Gutierrez in 2018 versus uh, 1994, 1998? I don't think there's any difference okay. really. It's it's the time has changed, like you said. Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. there's different situations, okay. right? Low. Are we speaking tomorrow or? You can speak either one, okay. Governor. But you know, uh, uh, I'll start off with English. But okay. uh, you know, uh, a lot of people tend to forget that what makes Guam mm -hmm. really, really special. Mm -hmm. I know that we have about the best beaches and mm -hmm. and location. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that uh, people tend to forget is the uh, the specialness of Guam, and that's her people. Okay. And and uh, so, what am, am I going to be different from mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. that I was? I'm still the same Carl Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I grew up in an era that uh, that that practiced the culture to its max. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the respeto, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. respeto, these things, and helping one another. You know, uh, and to to me. Uh, I think Guam is losing its soul, mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. the soul, the heart and soul is the people of Guam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So me and my wife, Jerry, uh, having grown up in that era and, and, and went in in 1994 saying that I was going mm -hmm. to help the people of Guam. Mm -hmm. Madeline and I ran that way, helping mm -hmm, the people mm -hmm, of Guam. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people that were at that time kind of left out in the in the periphery. Okay. They've been marginalized. They're, they can't they can't even get to their own properties because mm -hmm. they can't afford the uh, half a million dollars worth of bulldozer work, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And they can't afford to pay uh, eighteen hundred dollars per power pole mm -hmm. or or trenching for water lines or sewer lines. Mm -hmm. And so I made a commitment that I was going to bring them into mm -hmm. the twentieth century. Mm -hmm. Remember this nineteen ninety five sure, sure. before it went out sure, in five sure, years. Sure, sure. So we did that, and uh, over the last two decades, mm -hmm. Jerry and I have uh, come to realize that what has really been missing is the, the soul of the people and the specialness of Guam, mm -hmm. and that uh, there seems to, to, to be a treatment of our people as numbers and not necessarily mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, as human beings. Mm -hmm. with, you know, and and mm -hmm. the soul, like I said, it's not mm -hmm. there. Look at what's going on right now. I'm not blaming any one particular governor for it, but the influx of many different types of, of nationalities mm -hmm. uh, and joblessness because of maybe overabundance of people for a small territory like this. But that's what's causing it. I mm -hmm. mean, how many people are in jail right now? The meth epidemic on Guam mm -hmm. is, is tremendous. The, 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 uh, the, the really bad uh, you know, uh, robberies sure, that are out sure, there, sure. the rapes, the, the beating up of people, mm -hmm. uh, that's what's mm -hmm. very evident. And mm -hmm. so we're making a commitment to be still, Carl and Jerry, we mm -hmm. never left the people. We yeah. were out in January 6, mm -hmm. 2003. Mm -hmm. we, never, we never stopped being who we were. We kept on following the culture, mm -hmm. going to the funerals, the wakes, the, the weddings, you know, and even to the medical mm -hmm. fundraisers mm -hmm. because uh, people come to my house. Mm -hmm. People were delivering uh, stuff from, from uh, I, I forget, several times sure. to deliver water to my house. And uh, they're out there unloading uh, hundreds and ca of cases mm -hmm. of water. And I said, well, where are you guys yeah. dropping this here for? He says, mm -hmm. oh, sir, I have the order here. Mm -hmm. They start to deliver to, to the government house. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they were delivering it to my house, not our government house. I mean, people knew that mm -hmm. that was where we were receiving yeah. things before. Go Governor, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> I read in one of the publications that you had labeled yourself, you're really a centrist and a, a right-leaning, a, a right-leaning, right-leaning 
Democrat, okay? Yes. Right-leaning Democrat. So explain that to well, our people, well, et cetera, because, you know, sometimes party lines here in Guam, like like, like now, I, I'm, I'm critical of the Republicans. They're acting like the Democrats before. The Democrats now are acting like the Republicans are now. So what does that mean for being a centrist and a right-leaning uh, well, Democrat? Well, well, let me say from the <laughs> beginning that, that I, I, was, I'm a, I was a registered Republican. Okay. Um, Kurt Moylan and Governor Camacho mm -hmm. was my, a, thir a third cousin. He okay. was... he. Um, he was part of the territorial. I worked very hard with the clan that my wife belonged to, the Tories, Bordalio, mm -hmm. that's that, 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 that okay. clan. Uh, they were all uh, the Tories. Mm -hmm. They were all Republicans. Okay. So we all... Territorial I at the time, right? Territorial. Yeah, yeah. And then we, yeah. we worked very hard to mm -hmm. get Carlos Camacho in there, my uncle, mm -hmm. Carlos Taitano. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I knew from the mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then Ricky Bordalio decided after they passed the, uh, the uh, elected governor mm -hmm. uh, act, that he was going to run for governor. And so in 1969, uh, through my sister Evelyn, mm -hmm. asked if I could help Ricky, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, win the, the, the Democratic mm -hmm, primary, mm -hmm. and I did. And through that process, I l met a lot of people. Ricky didn't make it. They, he won the primary with mm -hmm. Dick Titano, but he, um, but he didn't make it in the, in the general election. Mm -hmm. But having met uh, hundreds and hundreds of people, I said, let me try my hand at being a senator in 1972. Mm -hmm. This was 1970. I won. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I took the label of as, as a Democrat because mm -hmm. that's the, la the latest that I was working mm -hmm. with, with the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I was a businessman mm -hmm. at Carlton Construction. Mm -hmm. I knew how to run a business. I knew that you can't spend money that you don't mm -hmm. have and mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. over borrow. Mm -hmm. And so when I became governor, I mean, when I was running in 94, Jesse, mm -hmm. I'd say 99% of the business community were against me because simply the title Democrat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And But when I won, they were all surprised when I called these Republicans in and said, mm -hmm, listen, mm -hmm. we have to extricate ourselves from this mire that we're mm -hmm. in right now. The bubble, is economic financial bubble of Asia mm -hmm, has just mm -hmm. burst. Our, our, our finances are going down by 100, 100 million fold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I asked them to come in and see what we can do about mm -hmm. building back the economy. And the first thing we did was say, let's... Mm -hmm. Let's start to remove the deficit that we have. And we worked a plan. Mm -hmm. And we were reducing the, uh, the deficit. So these people in the business community understood that mm -hmm. although, as a Democrat, I really am almost like a Republican sitting there mm -hmm. working with them. But, but let me ask Governor this, because some of the criticism that you got uh, back then when you were governor and even afterwards, some of the, uh, the, uh, the, the criticisms that, that you, you got in, in, in running for office again is the fact that, I mean, I know that you, you, you said you're, you're a, a right-leaning a right Democrat, okay? Yeah. And you, you talked in, in your opening statement basically that, you know, people, you know, poor people, you, you are really, you know, people helping people, right? Yes. And people come to you about, you know, <laughs> what you and I may take for granted. Yes. But this is this is the reality in life. Yeah, yeah. life. Um, but people were critical of you of power poles installations mm -hmm. and street lights and water hookups and, and things of, of that nature. And in a big part, if I'm not mistaken, a big blame of, of some of what GPAs, uh, um, 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 deficits and GWA was under the Carl Gutierrez administration. Yeah, well, let me say this first, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Remember Joseph Goebbels, right? Yes. I he do. was mm -hmm. the propaganda minister for, <laughs> for, for Hitler. And he said that, you know, you repeat a lie many, many, many times and it, it will becomes start the it? truth. <laughs> no, he says it becomes okay. the truth. Okay. And that's why you brought this thing up again because yeah. I probably, probably listened to it. I, yeah. But let me say so, that all of my budget that, okay. that came into the governor's mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. plus the compact impact mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. All of those were used to be able to pay for those power poles that people could not do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and this idea of shifting the blame to me because I took, and I, I, I want to tell this story on sure. the air. Sure. When the people came in and said, Governor, we need power up there in Astumbo, up in, in Anolupo. I can't afford $1,800 for, mm -hmm. for a cement power pole. That's just for one. That's for one, yeah. yeah. And sometimes they need 30 or mm -hmm, 50. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I called in Malo and Rick, Rick, uh, uh, on Pinko. On Pinko, yeah. I said, mm -hmm. where, are the, where are those wooden power poles? Because you guys are under what they call a, a pole hardening program mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. the federal government. Sure, sure. And they said, oh, sir, they're stored up there on the Seng Sung Road. Mm -hmm. I said, take me there and show me. So I went up there, and there they were, 4,800 power poles, almost in the pyramid states there. I said, well, why don't we use this for these people? He said, sir, we cannot. Because the federal government said that once they gave us this millions of dollars, to remove those poles, all we could do was store them. I said, really? He says, yes, sir. 
I said, okay, who's the governor here, Pete? I mean, not Pete, but Malo and uh, Rick. Mm -hmm. He says, you, sir. I said, okay, I'm ordering you to take those power poles and you store them standing up all the way into the way those people live mm -hmm. and give them power, the power. So it's a different way of storage. <laughs> it's a different way of storage, yeah. and they're still standing there now giving power to these people. And they're still being and stored. And that's 20 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, okay. All right? Yeah. So to say that, that that's what caused the street lights, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now all of the street lights came from Compact Impact Money. Okay. When we put up a street light, we paid for it, 200 okay. and some dollars for mm -hmm. installation. Mm -hmm. So that's what I used. At that time, I was only getting 4.58 million for mm -hmm. Compact Impact. Now mm -hmm. it's 16 plus. Mm -hmm. All right, and okay. there were restrictions at the time, but I could use it for capital improvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing for water, same thing for sewer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and roads. But people said, hey, you're just using that. I said, yeah, I'm using my own budget. Remember when, when the hospital was really suffering? Well, you came in and took over. Right? And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. you know, when I took mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. under, the, under, under the law that says that if I declare an emergency mm -hmm. every month, I can give $250,000, sure, sure, okay? Sure. So I declared an emergency for the hospital, and every month out of my budget of the governor's office, mm -hmm. 250000 went to the hospital. By the ninth month, the Democrats and the, and the Republicans of the legislature said no more. They took away my authority for two fifty and made it zero. You know, though, that's my budget, you know? So mm -hmm. they stopped me from giving it to the hospital. But when they, when they make this story up and tell this not so truthful mm -hmm. way of, of doing this, these are all monies that were appropriated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, I, want, I want that to be out there because, like you said, when you repeat a lie every time, and, and the media was none of my friends at that time, <laughs> yeah, they'll keep repeating it. There you go. Governor, i got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Talk more about GMH because some things never change. That's right. <laughs> Only the faces change. We'll be right back. <laughs> 